some of you might be in trouble. Some of you might not be having so much trouble, but it would be good practice anyway for you, I guess. Uh, constructing intervals. Before we start doing that, it's kind of important, one of the most important things is to be able to uh, look at the keyboard and understand the keyboard. So you must understand the half steps and whole steps uh, on the keyboard and how to get around the keyboard, first of all. Uh, however you decide to figure out what note you are on the keyboard, doesn't matter. Uh, I use two black notes and look at the three black notes. And then what I do is I target that note, that white note that's right before, uh, and I say, Two, the note right before the two black notes is, is a C, and the note right before the two, three, excuse me, the three black notes is an F. Now, however you decide to do that is fine. doesn't really matter. But you do have to be able uh, to get around and understand the keyboard, I think. So uh, that's going to be something we're going to try uh, first of all. Uh, I'm going to ask a couple of questions here. Uh, I'm going to clear out this. Uh... Checks first on the uh, questions that you're seeing before. Okay, I'm going to point out a note here on the keyboard, and uh, you uh, tell me if I am correct or not. I'm pointing out this note right here. This, these arrows aren't the best, but you can see the note there that I am pointing out, I'm going to put a little circle on there, that note right there. If you think that note uh, is a G, then would you please uh, put a check mark? If you think it's a G, put a check mark. So that would be, yes, it's a G. And I see people are not believing me, which that's good. It's not a G. Go, do you see the check uh X and the check mark down there. You can go ahead and put an X for no to X for no, check mark for yes. Those those are underneath your name there on the bottom toolbar underneath that. So you should see that appear once you decide to use that. Okay, so you are correct. Um, that is not a G and it's an A. So just a couple of these to get started, kind of warm up here, and let me get used to doing this. I am not an expert. I've been trained in this, and it's going to be quite a few things to kind of manipulate as I go through here. So uh, just bear with me. I'll make some mistakes and uh, sound dumb part of the time, but that's that's okay. Uh, okay, now I, we, I just asked uh, a white note. Let's see another note here. This note right here, I'm going to put the arrow on, the black note there. If that note is a G sharp, then would you put a check? If it's not a G sharp, then put an X. So most of you are agreeing that it is a G sharp. Uh, which it is. Could I also name that note as A flat? Yes, I could do that. So we're going to get into that in a, in a couple of minutes. It's going to be very important how uh, we name some notes. So uh, anyway, you got to know the keyboard. That's one thing that's going to happen. Uh, we have to know numbers of uh, half steps. I, I advocate using half steps to count intervals. I think it's the easiest way. I really don't try to make this harder than it is for you. I know sometimes it gets very confusing. But on page 129 in your textbook, there is a list of the intervals. Uh, on the left side is the order of the half steps, <clears throat> and on the right side is the order of the names. Uh, I use the order of half steps just because I think it's easier. I've got this split into two slides so that uh, you could see it a little bit better. But uh, for each interval there, uh, you will see that 
it shows the number of half steps. If I am looking for a major six, I don't like that. I'm going to use a different thing here. I'm using, uh, I want to use a major sixth. Then I know that it's going to be nine half steps that I'm going to need. And by the way, uh, it's mentioned in the lesson, but you will notice over here that if, uh, I'm, if I'm wanting to do major, then I'm using a capital M. And if I want to do a minor interval, whoops, I'm using uh, a lowercase n, it's kind of the general way that that's done. Uh, capital letters indicate major and lowercase letters in, indicate minor. That's the standard procedure for doing that. So this list is going to be very important to you as you're doing uh, intervals. The other thing is that before you ever start trying to get a specific interval, I think that the best way to do it is uh, to get the basic interval first. So I put a line of letters just out of the keyboard. It doesn't have to start with A. You can start with whatever you want. But A, B, C, D, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, G, the musical alphabet, I put that out there. And then I figure out what my basic interval is. Now, there's a couple of things that get a little bit confusing about this, and I'm going to show you. But, for example, if I were starting with a C as my starting note, and I want to do the interval of a fifth, then I use C as the first note there. Now, uh, what happens is people get a little confused about this, and I'm going to show you in a minute what, why. But I use C as number one, and then I go ahead and go uh, up to the other numbers. And uh, I'm not going to go through them all here, but uh, what will happen is that C is number one, D is two, E is 3, F is 4. Whoops, I miscounted, didn't I? Sorry about that. I don't know why that's not erasing for me. But G must be 5. Sorry, it won't want to erase here for some reason. There it goes. Uh, okay, G is actually 5. I'm not trying to confuse you there. G is 5. So I count starting with the C, 1, D2, 3E, 4F, and G5, then I know that if I am trying to get the interval of a fifth, that I will have to name whatever note I'm using as some kind of a G. I must use a G. Now, when I go in and use the half steps from that page, that listing of however many half steps I need, I may have to put G flat, or I may have to put G sharp, or I may have to put G double flat, but I, and I know at this point that it has to be a G. Now what happens is sometimes you get confused between the two uh, of doing the intervals. When we do this way to get the basic interval, that first note, that given note is always number one. So when, I, when we do a specific interval, you're going to see why sometimes you get confused with that, but that's number one. So uh, no matter where you start, if I start on an F, for example, and I want to do uh, a third, so now it's a major third, but what I do is I use F as one, G is two, a is 3, and I know that because I counted it that way, the note that I'm going to have to use is the A if I'm looking for some kind of a third, whether it's a major third or a minor third or whatever, I'm going to use that A, and I have to remember that I've got to name the note as an A. So that's one thing. Uh, get the basic interval first. 
uh, after you get the basic interval, then you can go to the specific interval. Uh, okay, so assignment 8.1, this is just a clip out of your uh, submission form. 8.1, you might want some a piece of paper and uh, pencil as you do these two. We're going to do some of them together. I'm going to try to explain. I'm going to do, we'll do this 8.1, and I'm going to ask you if you, if you have any questions. Uh, the note that would be a major second above the given note is the note that we're going to name. Also, you can write the note in the staff and give the liner space. This class is very difficult to uh, explain musical concepts online. As you know, I have to do, use a lot of verbiage sometimes, and so we're hoping that this Wimba classroom will make all this easier. Uh, but what that means is uh, I want to know that you know it's a third space note or something like that, and I'll show you that. If you haven't done this assignment yet, I'll show you that as we do it. Um, so let's just try this. We're going to be doing major seconds above the given note. Okay, I've taken this slide, and we're going to use E as the given note. So here's the E on the keyboard. Also, use your keyboard. If you don't have a, a real keyboard, then use that uh, cardboard keyboard that came with your uh, textbook or print out a keyboard. But I think it is extremely helpful, especially if you're having trouble anyway, that you use the keyboard and visually be able to see where these half steps are. Okay, so we're going to use E. And remember, always, 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 uh, check out the clef sign. This is in bass clef. Some people forget that. You have to know it's bass clef. Okay, so this is an E. Uh, bass notes A, C, E, and we're going to be using that E right there. What, it doesn't really matter which octave I use on the keyboard, just as long as I have a visual reference of where the E is. Okay, so I said if I follow my own instructions there that I gave you before, what I want to do is get the basic interval first. So um, <clears throat> I want to go to my list. Let me put that slide back there. We're starting with an E. So here is here's an E. Now I said that um, E will be number one when we do it this way. F would be two. G three A four. I'm not going to go any further than that. But we're looking for it said a major second. Now at this point I don't really care about major or minor second. I just want to know what note I'm going to name. And I'm going to name this interval upward from E. I have to name it as some sort of an F. That's what I'm looking for because I already figured out here that it has to be a second. A second has to be some sort of an F. F sharp, F flat, F double flat, whatever it is. Okay, so I know it's going to be an F. Uh, keep that in your mix so I know it's going to be an F. And I'm going to go back over here to the um, other slide. Actually, I want to go to a different slide here. Um, I'm looking for a major second on my list that's on page 29 in the text. So a major second, uh, there it is right there. And how many half steps do I need for a major second? There it is. I need two half steps to make a major second. Okay, two half steps and I was looking for the note F. It has to be an F. All right, so here's it. E. That's the starting note. Now here's what's for it. When you actually measure the interval on the keyboard, you don't 
use E as number one, because when you're measuring an interval, you're, you're measuring the space between something. And if I say E is number one, there's, no, there's nothing between that. So what I have to do, I'm going in half steps on the keyboard. So E to the very next note, which is this white note, is one half step. So that's one half step. And then to the very next note, which is the black note up here, is two half steps. Now, isn't that what I needed for uh, my major second? Yes, I needed two half steps. So I counted up. I started on E, which was the given note. I went one half step and then two half steps, and now I've marked that note with the blue dot on there. That's the note that I need for a major second. Now, how did I say I have to name that note? I said I have to name it as, as some sort of an F. This is pretty easy because we started out with E, and the next note there is an F. If I go upward and raise the F a half step upward, that becomes F sharp. And that is the note that I, I need. So I have to name that note as an, as an F, so it will be F sharp. And I want to also show where that note is going to be on the staff. So uh, you can see where the E is here, down on the bass staff. That's the E. And I want to write the correct interval of a major second. So I'm going to make that. Uh, there's an F. It happens to be a blue F. It would probably be better if it was a black F, but that's okay. And this program doesn't really have anything that's too great to make uh, the sharp. It's going to be small, but the sharp uh, sign does go uh, before the note. So I'm going to put a little sharp sign there. So now it's F sharp. So now we have constructed the interval of a major second above E. I used the correct number of half steps and I named the note as an F. Okay, uh, I'm going to enable your audio back on here. And uh, what happens? Uh, what happens is that if too many people try to talk at once, you step on each other, and it's not good, kind of a mess. But um, if you have a question and you want to ask me a question, I, I, I could call on you one at a time. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. So if you have a question, you can go ahead and put up your uh, hand. Uh, just click on your little hand signal there below the names if you want to ask me a question about building this major second. Or if you have a comment. Okay, Chris, uh, go ahead and, and what, do you have a question? Okay. He's going to type his uh, his uh, question to me. So I'm just waiting for that. See if there's anybody else here that's a question. Once you get the hang of doing this, it's really not that hard. It's just a matter of going through the steps. Uh, he says, Chris says, so you don't count the E as zero when counting the intervals, but you do when counting it on keyboard. That's correct. I'm thinking how you said this. Yes, it is. When I want to get the basic interval, and I'm, I'm just using those line of uh, letter names of the musical alphabet, then I'm coming up with the basic interval by using using the E as number one. But then whenever, you're right, whenever I'm going to count those uh, half steps on the keyboard, he say, he's saying you 
count that as zero, and that's true. That's probably a good way to say that. I count the E as zero, and from zero to the next half step, uh, to the next note, very next note, is one half step. So that's exactly correct. Anyone else have a question about that? You don't have to be shy. Okay, so we did a, a major second. Uh, now, these assignments uh, in uh, lesson eight have different kinds of intervals here. Uh, uh, 8.1 also has a major third. So let's kind of do one of these together. Name the note that would be a major third above the given notes. Usually whenever I uh, have people do these intervals, I do them upward. It's just I think it's a little bit easier. Sometimes it can get kind of confusing if it's uh, if you try to go downward. So usually I think it's a little bit easier to go upward. Okay, so this is a major third above the given note. This is exactly what it's in assignment, by the way, and I think you only have to do the first three or so. I cut these down. Some of you are still doing all of them, which is great, but uh, if you're crunched for time and you want more practice, then uh, uh, just do the first three or however many. Okay, so first thing I look at is, guess what? I am in treble clef. That makes a difference for sure. So I'm in treble clef, and I'm using the starting note uh, as a G. I'm starting here on G. Could I do, could I use G? Yeah, it doesn't really matter which one I use, but I'm going to use that this, this one down here in this octave in this register, G. Okay, so what I would like to do is um, – Go ahead and get the basic interval. I think I'll just do a little list right here. Just wait till I type this in. Okay, so I, I didn't do the whole musical alphabet, but then I started with the G there. So um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put... Um, the numbers under there to kind of make it easier for you to so G would be one, A would be two, B would be three, C is four, D would be five, which we don't really need all of those, but that's okay. Okay, so to get the basic interval of a major or of a third, starting on G, uh, I'm going to count G as one, A is a is 2 and B as 3. So I know that whatever I come up with, I'm going to have to name that note as a B. All right, so get that out of the way right off the bat. Uh, now, going back to the list, I'm going to look on my list here. I'm looking for a major third. There's a major third, and the list says I need four half steps. Major third is four half steps. Now, what did I have to name it as? I had to name it as a B, so you kind of got to remember that. Uh, okay, so and I think it is a good thing, to, you might say, when you're doing an interval to, to use G as zero. So what I'm starting with the G, and I need four half steps. So G from G to the very next note, which is this flat note, is one half step. To the next white note, two half steps, three half steps, four half steps. There's the note that I'm targeting. I know that I have to this note as some sort of a B. Now, is that very difficult? Mm, no, because it is a B. You know, there's there's no flat or sharp involved with that. So I know that that note is a B. So a major third upward from G is plain old regular B. And I would 
indicated on staff over here on the treble staff right there there is regular B now the other part in the assignment is that I ask you to um, indicate by verbally or by verbiage on on your paper where that is so what you do in the assignment itself you say B third line and that lets me know that you kind of know where that is since you can't use a music notation program to submit the assignment to me that's how I do. okay so that's a major third uh, while we're at it let's just go ahead and do one here that would not be a major third but it would be a minor third. and I can use uh, G now I'm not going to go back to the list because I know what it is but uh, and we already concluded that we a B is going to be some kind of a third so a minor third is actually three half steps I'm not going back to the list but you can go back to the list and look there if you can't remember uh, and I don't of course expect you to have memorized okay so I need three half steps to do a minor third so from G to the next black note the very next note which is the black note is one half step white note two half steps three half steps there is the note that I have targeted this black note right here okay now I know I have to name that note as a B and uh, Here's B right here. This is, this is the B right here. Okay, so how am I going to name that? There's B, and if it's a half step lower than B, then the note name is going to be B flat. So that's going to be my answer for a minor third above G, B flat. Why don't I name this note as A sharp? We studied in harmonics, and every note has at least two names that can, it can be called. That note with the blue dot on it can also be called A sharp. Do we agree on that? I'm sure, sure you see that. It can be called A sharp or B flat. Why don't I name it as A sharp? The reason I don't name it sharp is because uh, A is not a third of G. Do you see that A is only the second up from the G? So if I named it as A sharp, it would be some sort of a second. It wouldn't be a third. That's why I have to name it as as a B flat. Okay. Uh, anybody have any question about that, or you want to ask me a question on that? You can probably just go ahead and talk. There aren't that many people on here. There's probably about ten. Let's see. Maybe I did disable you. No. Anyone have a question about that? Is it pretty clear to you? Who's someone that can talk? I, Tim, you talked to me before. You, do you get this now? Oh, yeah. Very okay, good. Uh, Okay, and you can use the emoticons there. You can experiment, experiment around with them. I see somebody putting the thumbs up that you see that. Okay, so we did, actually, we did a major second. We did a uh, major third and a minor third. So we've done all of those. Uh, assignment 8.2. These assignments just kind of do different intervals. This it says add a perfect fifth above the given note. Now I just follow that formula and keep, you know, no matter what interval it asks for, I do the same thing. You know, I find out the basic fifth first of all, 
and uh, what a fifth is, and then I go to my list and I look up perfect fifth, and I see that uh, a perfect fifth needs to have seven half steps in it. So I know to to go half step uh, seven half steps. All right, so let's try one here. Uh, Tim Baxter, why don't you give us a starting note? Can you do that? Can you just tell me what note you want to start on? Or anyone? Anyone there? Hello? Anybody G? there? Okay, we're going to start on a G. Who is that talking to me? <laughs> Diana. Okay, Diana. Thanks, Diana. Okay, we're going to do G. She's going to make it easy for you. So, uh, first of all, find G on the keyboard. Uh, you know, I, I, I still think that it's the most important thing if you're looking at that keyboard to figure out what's going on there. So, so there's a G. Could I use the GF in a different octave or register? Yes, I could. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I guess it's just as quick here. I'm going to go back to this other slide here that has my letter. So we're starting uh, we're starting with G, and G will be one, A will be two, B will be three, C will be four, D will be five, and that tells me that. Uh, a perfect fifth or a fifth, my basic interval is going to, I'm going to have to name the note as a D. All right. Okay, I'm going to go back to the other slide now. So we got to keep D in our brain here. Okay, so we're starting on this G that's right here. Uh, seven half steps, that's what we said. We need seven half steps. So from G, let me get my air. From G to the very next note, which is the black note there, is one half step, two half steps, three half steps, four half steps, five half steps, Six half steps, seven half steps. And what do you say we had to name that note as? You have to name it as a D. If you have paper out in front of you or if you have one thing you're working with, it's a lot easier than going back and forth like I'm having to do with this. Uh, but at least we have something visual that you can kind of grab onto this way. Okay, so it was seven half steps, G upward to a D is a perfect fifth. And uh, D right there up to this D right here. That is a perfect fifth. That's seven half steps. Okay, anyone have any questions on that? So we've done major second, major third, minor third. We just did a perfect fifth. You can do any of these. Not, one isn't more difficult than the other to figure out as long as you have that list. Uh, it's a little more difficult, I guess, just to count more half steps, but it's, it's no harder to figure out. Anybody have questions at all? Uh, assignment 8.3 is just different intervals. Um, you're going to be asked to do major intervals, minor intervals, perfect intervals. And really perfect is just it's to do with the uh, harmonics and how the note really sounds. But it, the perfect intervals are the fourth, the fifth, and the octave. But... Uh, that's kind of neither here nor there. But anyway, major intervals, 
minor intervals, the perfect intervals, and also you're going to be asked to do augmented and diminished intervals. And before we get to that, I'm going to kind of these rules for the intervals. On page 126 and 127 in your textbook, uh, a major interval made one half step smaller becomes a minor interval. So if you had a major third, you take it down a half step, it becomes a minor interval. A minor interval made one half step smaller becomes a diminished interval. And we also have something that's called a doubly diminished interval, and it, that is a diminished interval that's made one half step smaller. It's called doubly diminished, and we're not going to be doing any of those, but just so you are aware that it exists. Perfect interval made one half smaller becomes a diminished interval also. And a perfect interval or a major interval that's made one half step larger becomes an augmented. This is all in name. For you to figure out uh, a note, it, it's still the same thing. You're still going to get the basic interval. You're going to use the list and figure out the half steps and you're going to name it. Naming uh, an augmented or diminished interval sometimes is a little more difficult because sometimes you have to use double flat or double sharp whenever you do that So uh, when you name it. So I'm going to try to show you that. Uh, people get a little bit confused about that. But I think if you have the basics down, it won't be uh, – too difficult to do. Okay, so let's do uh, a diminished interval. And uh, let's start on, we've been starting on the white notes, let's start on a black note right here. This note uh, is E. Flat. We're going to call it E flat. Now, if I called it something else, if I called it D sharp, then we'd be it would it would change things when I start naming it. But uh, whoops, I don't want to do that. I want to name it as E flat. Whoa, I didn't name it as that. Let me try it again here. There it goes. Well, the flat didn't come all the way on there, but uh, so we're going to start with an E flat. Okay. Uh, I'd like to construct the interval of a diminished sixth upward from E flat. All right. So what am I going to do about all this? I'm going to go exactly the same order that I've I've been going. I'm going to use a list here. Uh, do I have to put an E flat? Do I have to say I'm starting from E flat? No, not with the basic interval. So uh, I'm going to start with E, and I know that I have to have some kind of a sixth. So I'm not going to put the numbers on this time, but E is 1, F is 2, G is 3, A is 4, E is 5, and C is 6. So I know that I have to name whatever I come up with as some sort of a C, whether it's C sharp, C flat, C double sharp, C double flat, whatever. But I have to name it as a C because from E uh, upward to the C is a six. That's the basic interval. Okay, so how am I going to know what an uh, the half steps that are needed for uh, a diminished sixth? Well, I'm going to go to my handy dandy list. Uh, and there it is at the very top. A diminished sixth is seven half steps. Okay, we have that. Diminished sixth is seven half steps. Uh, we started on E flat, and here's the E flat. Okay, seven half steps. Here we go. Uh, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, what did I say 
I have to name that note as E, F, G, A, B, C. To name it as a diminished sixth, I have to name that note there as some kind of a C. I'm just going to point that note out there. Okay. Well, that's a little problematic because here's C um, right here. And it's not too close to that. Does that matter? No, because you have the option of using double flats or double sharps. So uh, that note, enharmonically named as a C, is is what? Does anyone know what that note would be named as a C? Anyone want to venture a guess there? You're all too shy. I've already made about a thousand mistakes tonight. You could at least make one. Uh, it's not going to be named. Here's a, here's a B right here. This note right here is a B, right? I can't name it as B because it wouldn't be a six then. Someone want to talk? C double flat? Yeah. It's a C. Here, here's C. Let me... Uh, here's C right here. Here's C flat right here. And then up here is going to be C double flat. So from E flat to C double flat is a diminished sixth. Uh, we started with E flat here. Let me uh, just show you how I would put that on here. This is not ideal, but okay, there's E flat. And then I'm going to to uh, put the C up here. Here's C. And then all I have to do is put uh, the two flats there. There is a particular symbol for double sharp. It looks like a little X. You might have seen that in the book. Uh, but for flat, then you just have to use uh, double flats. Whoa. You can't see what's going on here. I'm like kind of getting out of the... So E flat to C double flat is a diminished six. Any questions about that one? Any questions at all about any of these? I think, you know... If if you just do the same thing each time, you kind of get in a groove about uh, doing it the same way every time, uh, then you'll be okay with it. Anyone have a comment? Any, do you think it's easier now that we did this lesson on it? Does that kind of help? Yes, musical theory is way easier to understand when someone's explaining it to you instead of reading it. Yeah. My chat is on. I see some approvals, Chris. My Thank brain you. is going brain around is a thousand. Sorry. That's, that's why it's hard to when you start talking over people. But my brain is going about a thousand different directions, so I'm trying to watch the chat, too. But... I see, Vinko, you say you don't have a mic. I get that. Uh, and some people put their answer over there, C double flat. So that's that's good. Okay, somebody else wanted to talk? If you put up your hand, I can call on you. And that... Sorry, who was that? Somebody was wanting to talk. Now they don't want to talk. I was just, just going to say it does make it a lot easier when you're explaining it instead of reading all that stuff and trying to figure it out. Yeah, it does. You know, it's it's been it's a problem. I, you know, 
um, developing the music reading class for online, you know, it's it works pretty well. There's some people that don't do as well with the verbiage when I explain things to them or whatever, or just reading it on your own. And we've known all along that, you know, ideally you can show something just like you show it in the classroom. So we're hoping that this is going to be a way to do it. And hopefully I'll get better at it as we go along also. And, uh, you know, you'll have the option to go back and look at these. This session will be archived and um i i think i'm telling you correctly that you when you log back after it's archived you just log back in the same way and you will see it listed uh i don't know if i name it but i would name it um lesson eight you know intervals whatever and you can go back if you have any questions does anyone have any questions or any comments about uh the wimba classroom i mean do you think it's going to be good? Do you think it works pretty well? Is there anyone that's used it before? I see some comments over there. Uh, Nick says it does help. And some people say they approve. It is It is a little limited because it's, for me, because it's not a music program. So I've had to just kind of come up with different ways that I can show things like there's some things that are really annoying like I, I can't I don't have an arrow that's like straight up or straight down they're all pointed different ways and things like that but I think at least it gives uh, you know visually it gives uh, a, more options for people to at least have a little better understanding anyone else have anything to say are the uh, rest of the assignments going to be on this also? I'm hoping that uh, as we go through the lessons, lesson, uh, I can get like a presentation, get it up so that we can have like a Wimba classroom for each each one. Just not, you know, at, because we're in the semester now, it's going to be a little bit hard for me to do that. But uh, I'm hoping to do that. I, that's my goal anyway. Um, We'll see. I think I think I'll be able to do it. Uh eight point six in your book is not for submission, but you do need to kinda know this and it's it's just there's a rule in there. An interval and its inversion will always add up to nine. It's on page one hundred and thirty one in the text. What that means is when you invert an interval, you have a say for example, uh you had the uh interval of a major second. If you invert it, it's going to be a minor seventh. They always add it to nine, and there's like some rules there which I didn't put in. I took this out of submission just because I know there's a lot of uh, assignments to do, but you do kind of need to know that. So if you look on page 131, the text, uh, that'll show you what what the rules are about uh, inverting the intervals. And really all that means is... Um, you know, if you take, I'll just show you briefly here, but <clears throat> if you take a, uh, I don't know, let's do one here, G to, uh, excuse me, E to G is a minor third. You see that E is on the bottom and G there. If I take the E and I put the E on the top up here, if it's a minor third to start with, actually that's a major third. Oh, no, it's not. I'm thinking wrong here. Okay, it's a minor third. If it's a minor third, then from the G up to the E is going to be a major six. So it's just that's how you invert an interval. Uh, if I put them like this, it might make more sense. Let's see if I put them uh, harmonically on top of each other. Whoops. Those aren't really very symmetrical, but whatever. So the the bottom one is a minor third, and the top interval there would be a major six. So they add up to nine. Three and six is nine. Anyway, you just kind of need to uh, know that. You're not going to submit it, but that's that's about it. Any questions at all? It's about an hour now. If you if you do have any other questions, you have, you can always use the web mail to ask me. Uh, 
just be looking for after spring break. I guess that would be uh, the lesson nine assignments would be due the week after spring break. These assignments won't be due until the 22nd when you get back from spring break. Uh, but I'm going to try to have a WIMBA session on each one, hopefully. You've been very patient with me. I appreciate it. And I hope it was helpful to you. And I hope you have a great evening and have a great spring break. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night.